Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to yet again another video, and it is time. The 2023 prospect previews have officially begun today with the number one overall consensus pick, and that is Connor Bedard. Uh, I am very excited to start off this series. I plan on doing 15 prospect previews this year. I think I did 10 last year. We're going to expand it by five, mainly because I want to keep covering more prospects, keep you guys in the loop with some of the other prospects in the NHL, and keep you guys in track of what other players are in this draft, because it is a very deep draft, and I definitely want to look at some of the players that are in here and um, give them some recognition. But of course, this guy, we don't need to give any recognition to whatsoever. Um, he has been playing some amazing hockey over the past couple of years, and that is Connor Bedard. Um, I mean, hands down, just one of the better players that we've seen in a long time uh, come through the NHL. And he has played really well in the WHL. He's played really well internationally. Um, he has just played well everywhere. Uh, so let's start off with the basic info here. Connor Bedard was born July 17th, 2005 in Vancouver, British Columbia. It really sucks that the Canucks were just one number off in the lottery combo for winning the draft lottery, which really sucks. Uh, I believe they were just like, tw I think like they had 12 and their last number and their last number they needed was 13. Really, really sucks uh, to be honest. So yeah, uh, the Canucks um, are going to miss out on Bedard, but Chicago uh, with the number one consensus pick is looking like they could be the ones that could get uh, Bedard for sure. Uh, he's also 5'10", he's 185 pounds, and he shoots right. So that is something to keep in mind there. Uh, we look at someone who is below six foot, and we say, oh, that guy's going to be running off. He's not going to be good. Um, no, we said the same thing about Ray Wayne Gretzky. Look what happened. Best player in NHL history. Uh, not saying Connor Bedard will be, but you can't underrate somebody because of their size. Um, even though they do have a short size, and they could get hammered at the NHL level. Um, they could get absolutely leveled. Um, I don't think that that will affect Bedard much, if anything at all. Uh, but because he is such a fast and dynamic player, and he is a nightmare. Uh, for some players. Uh, as it goes for draft rankings, he's ranked number one everywhere. And this is the consensus thing. Uh, last year was Shane Wright. I remember when I did that. Uh, he was ranked number one generally everywhere. There were a few places that had him ranked number two. And number three, of course, he ended up dropping to number four. Uh, but, you know, Bedard, there's no question he's going to go first, unlike last year. Bedard, uh, he's ranked number one by elite prospects, the daily faceoff, Dauber prospects, McKean's hockey, and Bob McKenzie, just a few of those, um, have ranked him number one. Um, there's many, many more. Pretty much every single draft site uh, that you go and see will have him ranked at number one. Uh, he is 120% the consensus number one overall pick. And I definitely expect that uh, to stay the same. We're not going to see any change this year of Slavkovsky. Definitely not. Uh, or like Slavkovsky, not with Slavkovsky. Just, de just definitely not. Uh, we're, Bedard is the consensus number one pick, and he's going to stay that way. Um, as it goes for some of his stats, you look into some of his stats that he had last season in 2021-2022. We thought this guy back then was good. Oh, man, he only got better. Uh, 62 games played last year with the Pats, 51 goals, 49 assists for 100 points. Uh, Bedard, of course, played a really solid year uh, last season for the Pats. I don't even, I'm not even sure if they made the playoffs, uh, but still, scoring 51 goals is really good. Um, and for a team like the Pats who, you know, as I said in that video, uh, when I made that early Bedard prospect preview, um, I said that he's only playing with really two NHLers that have been drafted. The rest are just young guys, young 16, 17, 18 year olds. Um, apart from that, and those two guys that they had too were very limited NHL experience type players. They barely played in the NHL. They were just drafted. Uh, so that just goes to show that, you know, Bedard was really kind of carrying that team the whole way through. Uh, genuinely. Uh, you look at the Canada U18. He play, he had four games played, six goals, one assist uh, for seven points. Of course, the prolific goal scorer uh, did it yet again, playing absolutely insane. Uh, with Canada U20, on the other hand, he had seven games played, four goals, four assists, eight points. So he played in both levels of the World Juniors uh, and played very exceptional, played very well um, in both ends. So definitely um, good at the international level. And as well as that too, I do believe he is set. He is gearing up for the World Championships uh, for Team Canada in Latvia. I'm not entirely too sure on that. I know Fantilli is, but I, I would imagine Bedard probably is. But I've been wrong before, so don't quote me on that. 
Um, that's it for 21-22. 22-23 was interesting because uh, Bedard played less games, mainly because he had to leave midway through uh, the season with the Pats to go play the World Juniors, which we'll get into in a second here. Uh, but with the Pats this year, he had an even better season. Um, and that goes to show that like Shane Wright had kind of a down year, um, and that kind of really hurt his draft status. Um, but with a guy like Bedard, he got better. Uh, 57 games played, 71 goals, 72 assists for 143 points. And that is something that we have not seen in a long time uh, in the WHL. We see a lot of 100-point scores, uh, but the WHL never seen before, um, genuinely. And Bedard's just been flying on all cylinders and was throughout the entire year with the Pats. Unfortunately, he couldn't carry his Pats into the playoffs. They got knocked down in round one by the Saskatoon Blades. Uh, the only way I know that because I have a friend who lives in Saskatoon. Um, but yeah, you know, Bedard played really good in WHL. But if you thought those 143 points in 57 games play were impressive, which mind you it is, and it was also even less than the fact that he played last year, the fact that in Canada U20, he put up, he put up triple the amount of points in seven games played. He had nine goals, 14 assists for 23 points, and that to me is just un unbelievable. In seven games played, he had 23 points. He had well over a goal per game, which is absolutely unreal to think of. Uh, and he really helped Canada uh, into the World Juniors and winning that gold in the championship. 100% and played really well. And this is a guy, and I'm going to go into my notes now, so I'll play some Bedard highlights like I have in previous years. Um, the main story that we've seen be popped up a lot is the fact that he broke his arm way back in the day. Um, and that, and if he broke it so bad that like he wasn't able, and if he like hurt it anymore, he could face some very um, dangerous like uh, lack of growth on his arm, and that was very dangerous for him. So he started shooting, and mind you, he is a right shooter. He started practicing to shoot with his left hand, and that's something that's very hard to do. Um, that's difficult to do. And you see back in the day, like a guy like Gordy Howe, and I'm gonna refer to Gordy Howe. I'm not saying he will be as good as Gordy Howe. But you look at a guy like Gordy Howe, and I've read his books. He has pra he has learned to play hockey on both sides of the stick, and Bedard has done the same thing, which I think is very impressive. Um, as well as that, too, there was also a story that popped up that he once brought uh, his gear on vacation to Hawaii to train. And not his full ice hockey gear. He brought his roller gear, his stick, and his gloves, and his balls, and everything like that. And he practiced in Hawaii constantly. While he was on vacation. So there's no off days for this guy. And that goes to show that he is a hardworking player. Uh, that you need in the NHL. Uh, he was named the future of hockey. At 13 years old. Which is absolutely insane to think. At 13 years old we're in 8th grade. And this guy was named the future of hockey. At literally 13. Now even better than that. He was granted exceptional status. As a freshman in high school. Which is absolutely unbelievable to think as well. Or sorry. Um, actually no. You're 13 in 7th grade. So in seventh, yeah, I can't do math. I should know this because I'm literally 16 and I was 13 three years ago. Um, but like 13 and being called the future of hockey in seventh grade and then being granted exceptional status before leaving middle school is freaking insane. And that is insane to think. Like all of us in middle school, we're just worried about puberty and all that. No, but Dart's getting exceptional status. Crazy. Uh, and I know Canada's a little bit different with that. Uh, he's been referred to as hockey's LeBron James, uh, which could – foreshadow that he could be one of the best players in the NHL history, um, like LeBron is NBA history. Um, he's been compared to Steve Eiserman, Sidney Crosby, and Connor McDavid. So those are three very uh, hard comparisons there. And I've been saying that this guy is probably one of the best prospects we've seen since either McDavid or even Crosby. And that's going back at least uh, seven years. And if you're looking back to Crosby, that's almost 20 years ago. Uh, so that's absolutely insane to think. Uh, some stuff about his game, he's very dangerous on the rush, which is no question. He's a nightmare for defenders out there. He is insanely fast. Um, he's an outstanding skater, as I mentioned. He can skate really fast. Uh, he's really good at deking. He doesn't rely on his skill either, and that goes to show that like, if he's a player that doesn't need to rely on his skill and is just a really solid player all around, uh, he's a dangerous player to play against. And as well as that, too, he also has an elite shot, as I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, um, where kind of where will Conor Bedard go? Um no question, first overall to the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, they lose Patrick Kane. They're in the first year of the rebuild, and they get lucky, and they get Bedard, and they get another generational player. They carry them on for years to come. And I'm very excited to see this guy play in the NHL. It sucks that he didn't go to the East or any of my favorite teams, uh, but 100%, I'm very excited to see what Bedard's going to do uh, in the coming 
years. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you guys think Bedard is going to be, how good he is, and all that good stuff. Uh, but anyways, thank you all for watching. Uh, the next one will be Adam Fantilli. That will come out on Monday. So we're going to do prospect previews probably every other day until the draft. So we might get even past 15. Uh, who knows? But anyways, thank you all for watching. Uh, and anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.